thanks for coming. So we're going to be talking about how to talk with our kids about healthy sexuality and the dangers of online pornography. So my focus, first and foremost, is I want us to focus on to be, right? I can come in here and I can easily give you a list of 10 things to talk about your child with pornography and everything will be fine, right? No, never. But we have to keep thinking about that big picture, right? I have a picture of a journey, right? We're all on this journey as parents, as educators, and we're guiding those kids with us, right? We've done this before. We want to think about that full picture. What is it that we want for our children, right? It's not just about pornography. It's not just about healthy sexuality. It's about our physical, our emotional, our intellectual, our spiritual, and our social health, right? So as I continue throughout this presentation, I hope you will think about those things and think about how does this apply to my child intellectually, spiritually, physically, keeping all of those accounts full. I know that for me as a mom, I don't do my best unless all of those accounts are full. When one of those is empty, I borrow from the other account, and so do our children. So that's why you want to be continually thinking about that full picture of health. Okay? Um, our organization is called Educate and Empower Kids. And we throw that word around all the time. What does that mean? Oh, we're going to empower. We're empowered. We're empowered, right? And we, have to, we don't really think about what does that mean. It means to give power, right? To launch our children. We did this when we potty trained them. We did this when we taught them how to drive. We used these various principles. We provide knowledge. We teach skills. We provide support. And we facilitate development throughout. And it's the same thing when we talk about healthy sexuality and when we talk about the dangers of pornography. I'm always going to bring those both up because I want us to constantly be focusing on teaching about the opposite of pornography, intimacy, true intimacy. Okay? I want to show you guys a quick video that we did at a local high school. It took um, less than an hour to shoot. We, within, with literally almost every single child, had um, something to say about pornography. So I'm going to show you that video real quick. I need to turn it up a little bit. Yes, I have. I'm a teenage guy, so yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. I've seen it, yeah. Yeah. I have. I was about 13, 14. <laughs> I was like 14. Sixth grade. 11. Probably like 10. About when I hit puberty, so around 11. Probably age 12. <laughs> Seventh grade. Fifth grade. 12, almost 13. Like maybe like eighth grade. I don't know, like elementary school. 14. Probably when I was 13. I accessed it online through the phone. There were just ads popping up at yeah. first. I was like on a website and it just popped up. Yeah, it was on my computer. I think it like popped up. It just <laughs> came across it, I guess. On my phone. Like four months ago, I was dared to watch it on my friend's phone. On my computer? Yeah. Oh, friend shows me, yeah. Friends. Some kid on the bus was just watching it, like showing everybody being kind of like funny about it. Probably a friend showed me, I think. The first time I saw it, it was my birthday and my friend showed it to me. I went to my friend's house and he showed me on his phone. It was on a computer. Yeah, one of my friends was like, dude, you gotta see this. Uh, yesterday. <laughs> like two days ago. <laughs> two days ago, yeah. Probably last night. A couple weeks ago. Yesterday, maybe? Well, I watch it Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, no. 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 I don't know. No. Mm-mm. Nah. No. 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 Uh-uh. Yes, once. Kind of. No. You're talking like once. Kind of. Nope. No. They've talked to me about it, but... Uh, how many times would you say? Like, twice, I think. No. Nothing more than, like, what it is. Make sure that you're the... F We're not supposed to advertise our books, so I, I took the, the advertisement part off there. All right. So we obviously... I'm not going to spend too much time on this, because most of us here know about the dangers of pornography. Now, a lot of us focus on the addiction side of it. So I've chosen to talk about the social side of it. Why is it that we hate pornography? Why don't we want our children accessing it? First of all, it's misogynistic, and it normalizes deviant behavior. How is it misogynistic? It's violent, right? It's no longer... It's not just naked pictures like 20 years ago, right? We do not, it's not just something arty or fun anymore, if it ever was. Um, it's, 
it's always a woman in a position of powerlessness, is it not? It's always something degrading. I, I hate that word degrading. I feel like it's a punchline nowadays. It's, degrading is a compliment to, to pornography. It's violent, it's horrific, right? It normalizes deviant behavior. There's a reason why um, teen porn is still is the number one search term. We're normalizing having sex with underage girls. There's a reason why mom and son has now popped up on the top 10 searches for American porn searches. Okay, normalizing incest, it's wrong, right? Daddy daughter porn, that's been around for a while, but that's a new one just this year. Mom and son porn popping up in the top 10. We cannot allow this to keep being normalized, right? Destroys intimacy. So this is something that concerns me because I want my children to understand intimacy. I want your children to understand intimacy, that it's not just an act, right? What pornography shows us is the act. There's not hand holding, hugging, kissing, building a friendship, going through a marriage, going through a committed relationship ever in pornography. It is the act, right? And that is it. And that is what they are trying to sell us as this is sex. So we need to talk about the opposite of that. It hijacks one's sexuality, meaning that before our children, so if our children are being exposed at 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, they have not decided for themselves what is sexy, what is beautiful, what is fun. But we have an industry ready to, ready to tell them what, what sexuality is. And so before they can even decide if they, are, if they are gay, if they are straight, we have an industry ready to tell them what they think they should be, right? Um, we also need to know as parents, where is pornography most often found? It is being found online, obviously, most like uh, for most purposes, but on our phones. A lot of parents still think that it, they have to, they put that filter on their home computer, done, game over, right? We know we need to do better than that, right? We need to be starting to monitor, looking after phones, looking after any internet enabled device. And what it does to a child's brain, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I hope you know that it is a drug and that it does excite the same brain pathways. It does this, we build up that same amount of tolerance, creating those new pathways that need to be satiated with greater amounts of pornography and more and more violent forms of pornography, okay? It's the difference between, you know, I, don't, I, I hate for anybody to look at pornography, but I like to think of it as what does a bottle of scotch do to a 35-year-old and what does that do to a 10-year-old? They do very different things because that brain is not developed, right? And then I've also heard a lot of parents say to me, well, I, have all, I only have daughters, so I don't need to have this porn talk. And yeah, I'm glad you're chuckling because it's hilarious, right? But because we have to think about what is everything else that we're being socialized to in music, in books. I mean, teen lit has changed dramatically in the last 10 years, has it not? Cosmo, every magazine cover is a woman offering herself sexually. And so what does that message tell our daughters? You need to be available sexually at all times and all places to everybody, right? Same thing with the boys. What are our boys being taught? Think of every magazine cover of a man. Is he like this? You know, or does the daughter, ha does the girl have a face? No, the, the magazine covers for men or something hyper-masculine, something very aggressive. So again, teaching our sons that they need to take, that they need to be aggressive in order to be a real man, right? And then to both of them, they're taught that we're supposed to be not only sexually available, but that we don't need a relationship to have sex. You just do it anytime, anywhere, any place, right, with anybody. That you're not worth anything more than that. That sex is the equivalent of a sneeze. So why not give it up to anyone, anytime, right? So that's why we have got to teach the opposite of that and be that first best source of information. Research shows we believe the first source of information we hear. So even when it comes to difficult conversations, we need to be the first one to have it. And final thing that we are being socialized to constantly is that committed relationships are burdensome and unnecessary, right? And we've all been hearing about the consequences for that for two dec three decades, right? Mm -hmm. All right, empowering with knowledge. So. What does a three to seven year old need to know about sexual intimacy? So we started selling these books a couple months ago and of course we have parents saying, I don't think a four year old needs to know anything about sex. And I'm thinking, well, I'm not giving a how to manual here. Okay, we need to have our children protect themselves. They need to understand how amazing and wonderful their bodies are and that they're worth protecting, right? So we have, protect, so in our books, and if you, even if you don't buy our book, I want you to write this down because this is what you need to be teaching. What does a predator look like? You know, it looks like someone in, that you know, right? Most abuse happens from people we know and love and care about, right? 
we need to talk about bodily knowledge. They need to know their anatomy. They need to know that they are special, that they need to have relationship instruction. This is what respect looks like. This is what, this is what how important you are, how special you are, and why we, you deserve respect and why you need to give respect to other people. Okay? I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because this is in the handout, okay? If you did not get the handout, there'll be one available, I hope, at the end, at the back of the room for you. And just friendships and gender. Why would I bring up gender for such a young age? Because pornography is, fights against gender. There's always a woman in a position of powerlessness. There's always something pushing a woman down that we need to talk about gender, that we need to talk about how important and complementary both genders are. Okay. Empowering with knowledge again. So when it comes to pornography, again, people say, why would you talk to a three-year-old about pornography? Well, if you're handing them a device, you need to talk to them about pornography. It can be this simple, okay? We do not look up at pictures or videos of naked people. We don't take pictures of ourselves when we are naked or un are minimally clothed. And if there's something that makes me uncomfortable, we need to talk to mom or dad. It can start out that simple. It doesn't have to be a long message about misogyny or um, brain addiction at that young of an age. When your child is ready, you'll know, okay? You'll know when it is time to start adding those other layers onto it. We wanna talk about where it exists, you know? Hey, sometimes this might come up on your phone, on your tablet. We went, we're going for romantic lighting. I like it, thank you, thank you, I feel, I feel better. Um, and what to do when you see it, okay? Coming up with a plan. When I was little, I remember in going to, in kindergarten, we came up with a fire escape plan. And, I, and it terrified me. The first time I, that there might be a fire in my house, the idea of that scared me. But that the fact that there was a plan and an escape route and a meeting place for my family took most of those fears away. So having a plan for your child of what to do when you see it, okay? So empowering with skills, okay? So we talked about some of, you know, a lot of predators might use pornography to groom children. They might use other methods, but we wanna teach our children again how to say no practicing this. Yell, my children, I've said, yell, yell no to me. And finding out where is it, where is, when is it okay to say no to an adult? Kids don't, most of us have a blanket policy, right, for kids? We can't do that, right? We have to teach them when are those opportunities and places that we can say no, okay? And how to avoid pornography, okay? And I already gave you those bullets before of when to talk about it, okay? What does an eight to an 11 year old need to know about sexual intimacy and pornography, okay? So we started out, again, with some of that same protective information. Is it enough to have that one talk? <sighs> I had that one predator talk when they were five. They're covered. No, it's not. I'm sure all of us have seen. How many times, how many worksheets as a child did you do to learn addition and subtraction? Maybe 500, 1,000 worksheets, but we want to have one sex talk or one porn talk? Absolutely not. If we want them to believe this about themselves, that they are unique, that they are special, that they are worth protecting, and that there are dangers out there, we need to repeat this, and we need to layer it and add over time the different discussions, okay? Bodily knowledge. So this is when we need to start talking about body image. You might even need to a little bit younger. Some of these are fluid in that six to seven, or also up to that 12, 13. You know your child, and you know when to bring up this conversation, okay? Talking about body image, curiosity, masturbation, everyone's favorite topic, right? Everyone wants to have this conversation with their eight to an 11 year old. Raise your hand, who wants to? Nobody, I know, thank you. Thank you, let's talk afterward. Um, I, this was not my favorite topic to have with my kids, okay, it was not. But I knew that I wanted them to hear about it from me first. Okay, so that, when we come across these difficult topics, that's always the question on my mind and I hope it's the question on your mind. Do I want them to know from me or from television, videos, movies, and pornography? And that's when we need to take the initiative and be strong and have those conversations that maybe we weren't planning on having, okay? Um, how the mechanics, just the mechanics and the basics of sex. You'll know how to start, you'll ask the question, they'll respond, okay? And then you'll know when how to add on, okay? None of us are gonna be perfect. I'll get to that later, not being perfect. Um, relationship instruction, okay? So this is when we need to, again, add on to that, what is respect? What does a healthy relationship look like? Talking about them, what does that look like? Pointing things out on television that they might come across. Does that look like a healthy relationship? Is that the way you wanna be talked to? Is that the way you will talk to somebody? So using those everyday experiences, okay? We're gonna add on 
media savviness, okay? Now it's time to start showing our kids, what is this, who is this advertisement for? Who are they advertising for? Who's their audience? Do you think her hair really looks like that? Is that what her skin looks like? She's poreless. She has no pores. Do you look like that? Kind of getting our children to be a little bit more savvy about that. You know, this is something that all of, you know, we, how many of us, how many of you are over 35? Me too, right? Um, a, a really great um, researcher named Gail Dines, I saw a talk from her and she said, most of us were brought up in a print-based culture, right? And over 35. And now we're in an image-based culture. And most of us are illiterate. Can we, at the snap of a finger, look at an image and know who the audience is, what's been altered about that picture, what they're selling, and why? Not really. It takes a few minutes, does it not? Because not, we have not grown up in an image-based culture. So we need to be teaching our children how to read an image so that they're not manipulated by it, right? Including pornography, right? Sexual intimacy, being very positive. I always use the example of, I don't remember a lot about what my mother taught me about sex, but I remember she talked about it like this, right? <laughs> and it was magic, right? And so, that set me on a good path, right? And I hope your parents set you on that path. I can tell by your faces, not all of them did that, right? And so we need to be taught. When I went to BYU and the University of Utah, we had, I, this is one of my favorite sub subjects, sex, always has been, and I remember the shock and awe of some of my girlfriends from some of the things that their parents had never talked about. And I wanted to think that, this, that nowadays that that was done with, that we were all past that. And it's not past that. When I talk with friends and colleagues, we're, we really haven't changed that much. We really have not gotten that much more comfortable. And we need to, okay? Empowering with knowledge. What does an eight to an 11 year old need to know about pornography? Same thing that a three to seven year old needs, but I've added the why component on, okay? Some of our children really key into this. This is something that they can, I have a nine year old, and this is, this is the part that, that he gets that he cannot under, that he has asked over and over, why would this happen? Why do people wanna watch women have that happen to them? Why do they wanna hurt women? What is going on here? And starting to discuss the factor of money, okay? And explaining to him that this is all done in the name of money, that this is not art, that this is not something beautiful and fabulous, but this is all done to change a woman's body into a commodity, just like orange juice and bacon and anything else to sell something for money, okay? And so, for, and again, you'll know your child if this is an appropriate discussion for them, if they will understand this, and if, they will, if that might help them avoid pornography, okay? Skills, okay? How to protect ourselves, respect for self, and adding on positive self-talk, okay? I can't think when, when those negative messages started coming into my head. Okay, I was a child that definitely had body image issues, definitely. Thought I was a fat kid from the time I was eight or nine years old, okay, maybe younger. For no reason and for nothing that my parents said, maybe I can maybe blame it on society, I don't know if it was media, I'm not sure where the, where the blame lies. But I knew it was something that I can now look back and be like, I wish that was something I had been talked about. I gave a body image talk last fall to about 80 girls in these four workshops. And I could tell none of them had ever had a discussion about this, okay? And that, that frightened me, okay? And that when I also had told these girls how powerful I thought they were and saw the shock on their face again, it, that brought me to tears, that this is again something we don't talk about. We might tell it to our little boys that you're strong and powerful, but we neglect to do that with our girls. So I hope you're doing that with both your sons and your daughters. <clears throat> so bringing that positive self-talk helping our kids say good things and nice things to themselves. I have my children practice this. Tell me something good about yourself. Tell me something wonderful about you. And I reciprocate and I set the example, right? By not saying anything bad about myself to them, or ever. Okay, we talked about deconstructing an image and choosing good media. I wish we could do a whole presentation on just choosing good media and helping our kids have a discussion and deciding with them, not just telling them, this is what good media looks like, and how much a day, and how often, okay? 
and how to deal with pornography. So adding on to that same discussion that we had with our younger children, how to avoid it. What's the plan for if we're at a friend's house and they pull and they happen to show me pornography? What are we going to do? And having your child repeat it back to you. Role play it if you feel comfortable, okay? All right, empowering of knowledge. So teenagers, what does a teenager need to know about healthy sexual intimacy? Everything we talked about and that it's positive and amazing and wonderful and that, that your child is so wonderful and amazing that it is a privilege to have sex with them someday. Not a right for anybody at any time, right? This is not something that is commonly discussed. You know, does your child, will your child, by the time they leave their house, believe that about themselves? That sex with me is a privilege, not a right. And so that I can choose what is right for me, the right place, the right person, the right relationship, right? Imagine if our children launched out of our houses believing that about themselves. Because it's not just about the sex, right? Then it becomes about that big picture. What does our child belong, believe about themselves spiritually, physically, emotionally, socially? They have that big picture in their head, right? I hope. Okay? And the positive and negative aspects of sex, being candid and open. It's not just something that is horrible and if you do it, you're going to get pregnant and have an STD, right? You're going to cover that and the schools are going to cover it. Do they cover, they cover that in the state of Utah, right? When do they start that? Fifth grade here? New Mexico, fifth grade. How about here? Fifth grade? fifth grade, right? So they're going to start those conversations, right? So you'll find in our books we have very little information on that because we know that that's out in the schools, the STDs and pregnancy, because we want to focus on intimacy, right? Protective information, okay? Our kids are all going to get unwanted sexual attention, not just our girls anymore, our boys now too. How is your child going to do with, deal with that? Have you had a discussion about that? How are we, what is, what is the best way to deal with that from a peer and an adult, okay? Because peers perp on peers, right? Relationship advice, okay? Healthy versus abusive relationships. What do I want in a relationship? What, is that, what kind of an ideal partner are you gonna be? What does an ideal partner look like to you? It doesn't all, every discussion doesn't have to just be, again, about penis and vagina <laughs> and the dangers of pornography. We need to talk about all the other parts of that, right? Because sex and intimacy are not exactly the same thing, right? Intimacy is all the amazing, wonderful, fabulous things that go along with the act of sex. And I want, we, I want our children to have that full picture. What do you deserve in a relationship? How will you know when it's the right time, right? And of course, adding on to that media literacy, understanding images, and understanding more into this, that there is an industry targeting your child, okay? I don't think teenagers realize this. It's just one more available product online. But realizing that there is an industry. It took me f watching porn for five minutes to go, this is 100% targeted towards our children. This is not classy, sophisticated stuff, OK? It's, I looked at this, and it, you know, there was such a beavis and buttheadness about it. I was like, oh, this is for kids, OK? Now, I'm sure there is something, you know, I'm, anyway. I won't go into any of that. OK, forgetting my audience. All right and that it is addictive, okay? And this can be started again at that younger age. It doesn't have to be, we don't have to wait until a teenager to talk about the addictive nature, okay? Again, but you'll know which, when that discussion works for your child. I have a child that this, that talking about the, dis, you know, my nine-year-old, talking about the addiction side of it would not mean any of it. Talking about the social side of pornography, he gets it. But my 11-year-old, almost 12, talking to him about the addictive side of it, would be very important to him, okay? Having that, honing in on your child, okay? That it destroys relationships, okay? That it's damaging to our society, what it's doing. But that most importantly, that there's a way back because most of our kids are gonna look at it, okay? I'm gonna say all of our children are going to be exposed and many of them are gonna develop a habit. So are we gonna, we can't just use the guilt and shame and horror of the whole situation. We need to be talking about the other side of it, that there is always a way back, that there are resources. You know, something else that I always remember, I remember when I was at middle school or asking my mother, what would happen if I came home pregnant? And I expected a kick you out, da, da, da. She said, we would find a way to take care of it. We would, you know, just very supportive and blew me away. Because my mother is very conservative. But that was the love there that I knew. 
but if something happened, this person, my mother, my father would always love and care about me. And it's the same thing when we talk about pornography. We're going to talk about the dangers, 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 but we're also going to let them know whatever happens, I'm, I got your back, I'm on your side. Okay? Empowering with skills for the teenager. Okay? How to avoid pornography. Okay, every kid on the bus has it. Everybody at school, I always laugh. If my daughter brought cigarettes to school, they would snap her up and suspend her in a second. A couple months ago, one of her classmates had pornography. The teacher said, put that away. Okay, so this is what your child is going to be dealing with every day. How are they going to avoid it? Who are the people to maybe avoid it that maybe watch it every day? What will they do in this situation? How will they get away with it? And are, you, are they going to feel comfortable talking to you about it? Because you'll listen, right? Um, something else I, I like to talk about with this is, can your child speak up about it? Is your child, can, can you have a discussion about that where they can tell their friends, you need to, you need to stop. You know, we want to talk about our children, but can we empower our children to be voices against this too? When people offered me drugs at school, I was not always polite about it. No, that's stupid. I was really kind, like, you know, I don't want to do marijuana, gross, right? I probably could have been a little kinder and said, no, th no thank you, but um, I, wasn't, I wasn't that kid. Um, I know, you're shocked. Um, but I want my child to speak up about pornography. So my daughter came up with a slogan for some of our t-shirts. It says, break up with porn, right? She was very proud of it. So she, she was like, when are you going to make a t-shirt out of this? I was like, ah, OK. So we made a t-shirt. And she's been wearing it to school. Has it been rainbows and cupcakes for her at school? No, it has not, right? My, I have a friend whose daughter has been wearing the porn kills love to her to high school. Not rainbows and cupcakes either, right? Sometimes it is like, why are you wearing that? Or are people talking about her behind her back? And I ask my daughter, are you OK with that? What are you going to do about that? What's the best way to handle that situation? Can we do that? Can your children do that? I would love it if our kids could all do that, right? All right, and most importantly, to create his own unique, healthy sexuality. Right? We can all think back to what affected our fantasies, our sexuality as we were growing up. Okay? And we were not nearly inundated with what we have now. So can we teach our kids to, get, to develop their own idea of sexuality without all the bombardment? Right? Can we help them distinguish between all those things that they're learning or just keeping it away, or just staying 100% away from it, OK? Again, you know your home situation, what's available, and what you can do, OK? All right. Shame and guilt, OK? These are heavy topics. Talking about pornography, warning our children, can be, we can inadvertently turn this into a very shameful experience, and we don't want to do that. Okay? And it's still the debate among therapists as whether or not guilt is good. You know, guilt is usually associated with committing an act, and shame is usually the person, right? I'm a terrible person. I'm a horrible person. I did this, right? So again, something you're going to have to decide as a parent of how you can distinguish those things for your children. Of, I love you. You are a wonderful person. This was a poor choice. Okay? And helping them distinguish those things so that when they, because they're all good kids, right? Porn makes them think they're terrible, but they're not. They're just naturally, they're building on those natural curiosities. Okay, I don't know what I would have done. Have you guys thought about what you would have done if you had had 24-7 access to online pornography as a kid? I would have looked. I would have looked a lot. Okay, I don't know. I'm lucky that that was not available to me. Okay, that I have to, and I continually have to remember that when I'm teaching myself, teaching my children, teaching other kids, that we have to be compassionate, that we have to think, this is natural curiosity, this is normal, okay? It's natural to want to look and see these things. So how are we gonna kindly teach this to our children about what this does to them, the ad addic what, that addictive side of it, what this does to our culture, without making them feel like terrible people, right? All right, this is my favorite part, the providing support, okay? So you have a porn talk maybe kind of developed in your head or okay, you, you, now you know you want to talk about a, an aspect of healthy sexuality, what's the best way to do this, right? First, you need to accept that you're not going to be perfect ever, right? I'm not a chef, but I cook almost every day, right? And I'm going to teach my kids to cook. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to teach them anything grand or fabulous, but I'm going to do my best. And that's all anybody is going to ask of you as a parent, right? Secondly, I hate, I hate this bullet, heal yourself, right? These two trite words 
that to me are meant for those of us who have dealt with sexual abuse, right? And I have two tiny words to tell you, just get over it, right? That is not what I'm trying to say, okay? All of us have something related to sex that we don't wanna talk about. Or most, many of us have had something terrible happen to us and it makes it difficult to talk about some of these um, items related to sexuality. But we need to, do, we need to get that therapy, we need to get that help. If, that's keeping, if that is what is keeping us from talking to our children about, about healthy sexuality, okay? Or pornography, okay? Um, using your successes and failures to teach. So a few weeks ago, I had heard about Monica Lewinsky giving a TED Talk. I love TED Talks. And so I was talking, and I said the words oral sex, and I didn't realize my nine-year-old was right behind me, right? So of course he says, Mom, what's oral sex? Right? And I do not say, oh, never mind, you're too young. I don't do that. Okay? I said, well, let's go talk about it. And I had a feeling that my 11-year-old, almost 12, had not, did not know what oral sex was either. So I went ahead and said, well, let's go talk about it. Okay? Discussed it. It was not a big deal. I'm not going to give you the specifics unless you nail me down in the back. Unless you come find me, then I'll, then I'll tell you. Right? But then, of course, my 9-year-old, who always asks the great questions, said, what other types of sex are there? Well, there's anal sex. So I had a discussion with him about anal sex. It was not in my plan. This was not part of the plan. This is not my favorite discussion, right? But I went ahead and we talked about anal sex and other types of sex as well, okay? But because we have had a couple, several years, thank you, 10 minutes? Is that the, my sister just gave me the 10 minutes. She said not yet. Okay, 12 minutes. Okay, you guys are like, whatever, hurry. Lunchtime, okay. <laughs> But, where was I? Oral sex? Anal sex? Where was I? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so I had talked about, thank you, so I had I'd been talking about this for so long. They asked me, can I tell you what an amazing feeling it is to know that my kids can ask me anything? It is the best feeling in the world, and I, I want you to have that. I want you to know that, that your child will ask you these questions and will not be afraid to ask you any questions. If you can talk about these things, you can talk about anything. And that is an awesome feeling. That did not happen overnight. That's been probably a year and a half of talking about different topics. You know, once, every, once a month, you know, every couple weeks sometimes, or whenever they feel like asking me something, okay? I'm ready, I'm ready, right? Um, and I also talk about thing, mistakes that I made, right? Things that I didn't do right. People I had, wish I had been kinder to in my relationships, right? Using your values and cultural beliefs, your spiritual beliefs, your values, bringing your expectations. It's your home. You're going to guide this conversation, not the television, not the media, not books, you know, that are, you know, pro-porn, not pornography. This is your home. These are your children. You know them best. So you are going to guide the conversation with your values, right? You're going to be real and you're going to be compassionate, right? Because Statistically speaking, 90%, I know that Utah is mostly Christian, right? 90% of Christians have sex before marriage, at least, right? So most of our kids are not going to have that, that picture that maybe we had for them. So we need to prepare them that they might not live to a certain expectation for us and that we still want them to know we love them above anything else, okay? When it comes to pornography and sexual health, okay? constantly reiterating your love for them, constantly. Every conversation should be guided by that, okay? Your home, okay? And I've said it again, I keep saying it over and over. Be the first source on everything. When I was a, a younger parent, I was taught, well, just wait for them to ask you. When they ask, when they're ready, they'll ask you. I don't believe that anymore, and I don't teach that anymore. You bring up the conversation. You're letting your child know, we can talk about these things, okay? I waited until, you know, I was pregnant with number two and the number one said, hey, what about this? You know, or what, what's going on there, whoa, right? And, and then answering the question. Now, that doesn't mean you immediately pull up a diagram of a penis with a three-year-old. You know your child, but you need to just kind of start with those basics, okay? This is what we, you know, hey, this is, until as you, and you just keep layering and building on to that, okay? Planning your head talks ahead of time, but not making an event. Why don't we want an event? Why don't we want to have, you know, I was, we were at this religious conference in Tennessee a couple, few weeks ago, and I, we were talking about our books, and the man, a man said, my daughter had a purity weekend three weeks ago. <laughs> Done. 
right? And I was like, oh, right? Because his daughter was a middle schooler. And I said, because what have we done? We, how is our child going to recreate that event when they have a question? They need to be able to recreate that event on their own. So that's why sometimes it is going to be done in the car, maybe on the way to soccer practice, if you have a good 20 minutes or so. I don't believe in just two second, you know, hey, what do you think about oral sex? You know, it's not going to be that discussion. It's going to be planned out slowly. You know, you're going to be ready for those questions, right, whenever they come? No? OK. But maybe in the initial phases, you want to plan it out. OK, these are the questions I'm going to ask, and then I'm going to, I'm going to take it from there, OK? But I'm not going to create a, a party with, you know, balloons and cupcakes. <laughs> it's the sex talk, <laughs> right? We're going to make it. We're going to make it a talk, but we're not going to make it an event that our child cannot recreate, right? You're going to use everyday experiences, OK? When we, I no longer, I, well, not every day, but sometimes when I've gone to the mall and there's Victoria's Secret, I know I don't just, <coughs> right? I go ahead and say, look what's going on there. Not every time. But I have called attention and say, have you noticed how hard it is to look at her face when her breasts are right there? It's hard to look at her as a human being, isn't it? when all we can see is, is this gigantic picture of her breasts, isn't it? And my boys will be like, yeah, you're right. You know, then we talk about the, image, the, the imagery. What's going on here? What are they selling to us? Why do they need to have this picture front and center and right next to Santa Claus at my mall, right? Okay, and then we're gonna, so using those everyday experiences, okay? Somebody we know has a baby, let's talk about it, you know? Somebody has um, an, some other issue that when it, you know, we can use those opportunities to talk, okay? Connecting these topics. So in the handout and in our books, we have 30 topics. They're all related and they were all written in order to combat pornography. How is body image related to healthy sexuality? It's related, right? Our body image has been destroyed by what's out in the media, okay? I, I don't know many women who feel good about their bodies. I don't know many women that just love their bodies, or men either. Right? We're being attacked and violated constantly. So connecting these topics so that they know that these are all related. Self-esteem is related to our sexuality, is related to gender, is related, you know, again, all of these topics are related, okay? Again, showing that you love your, your child more than anything, okay? This is gonna convey the most. Like I said, I don't remember. Do you remember what your parents said? But you remember that tone. You remember the tone of what they said. <gasps> Was it this? Or was it my mother, who just was so excited, right? OK. Facilitating development, OK? So remember, it's not enough. So we gave them our skills, the knowledge. We gave them some knowledge. We gave them some skills. We're providing that continual support. We're asking them questions. We're continuing that dialogue. We're not just going to make it a once a year occurrence. So we're going to be a little bit more often, maybe quarterly, maybe monthly, to have these talks, right? And we're going to continue that dialogue and creating that environment of openness in our home. Okay, so once again, the goal being that we, can, that our child can talk to us about anything. Okay, modeling a great relationship. Okay, showing our children what healthy intimacy looks like. Okay, I didn't know that very much. My parents were divorced, so I didn't have a lot of models. Okay, so when I went to college, I was looking. I was looking for that. Look, I was at BYU where everyone and their dog was married. I was watching. I was watching those relationships. I was watching those women mother their children because I didn't want to have kids. So I was like, how did that happen? So but modeling that for our children of what a healthy relationship looks like, OK? Looking for opportunities to be positive, not just with questions with sexuality, but just in general. Looking for opportunities to be positive. So again, that creating that healthy relationship so they know they can talk to us about anything, OK? Filtering and monitoring. So there's some great resources out here talking about monitoring filtering. But the end goal, of course, is what? That they will self-monitor. Because when they get to college, every single one of their roommates is going to be watching pornography. Maybe not at BYU. I don't know, right? I wish it was so, but it's not right. There's, they're going to see it, OK, everywhere. So once they leave our house, they need to be prepared. How are we going to prepare them for that being around them? In college, it is going to be everywhere. So how do we teach them to self-monitor, to turn that off, to talk to their friends about it, to get away from it? It can't just be once. It needs to be over and over again, OK? But there is great software out there. So for younger kids especially, don't be afraid to use that filtering software on everything and monitoring, knowing where your kid's at. Who remembers those old 80s um, 
PSAs. Do you know where your child is? <laughs> right? I remember my mother was like, that's wonderful. But we have some, I want to know where my child is online all the time. And there's still surprises. She still surprises me. Okay? They all surprise me occasionally with where they are online. Okay? So having that software in place. Okay, using that as a talking point. Oh, I see you are over on this website. Well, let's talk about that. Okay, okay. Finally, this is the sum up of everything. Okay, keeping that big picture in mind. Okay, being positive, talking with our kids. The last thing I want to bring up here is 30 minutes a day. So I've been trying with my kids, and I've been encouraging many parents to have 30 minutes a day with no screens. Okay, and it sounds easy, but it's not. Okay, but it took me realizing that my child was worth it and that your child is worth it. No screens, no television, no iPods, iPads, anything. And it's sad that, that that's a challenge. It is a challenge for many parents. We're so overscheduled, we're so tired. When are we gonna fit this talk in or this and this and this on top of all the other things? We need to prioritize it, okay? Your child is worth it. Your child is worth 30 minutes a day minimum, okay? Are there any questions? Yes. Um, it is on YouTube. If I have it on YouTube. It's also on our website if you scroll down. So we're educateempowerkids.org. Scroll down through the bottom. There's a couple other videos we have. Um, but we're gonna be, and we're gonna be adding on to that. So check back. We're gonna be definitely adding on onto that one. Yes. That is a great question then you, you look it up and answer it. We, I can know why, I, when my kids were little, I used, she said, how do we, what if you don't know the answer to something? You know, I used to say with my kids, let's go look that up together. I don't do that anymore, okay? <laughs> Anal sex, no, I'm not gonna look that up, right? My husband's a doctor, so luckily I had the source right there, right, to be like, honey, I said, honey, how do you, what do you think? Medically speaking, should anything go in the anus? Tell me about it, right? And he was like, Okay, so that's a great question. So I look it up online, and I have some great anatomy books. We love anatomy books, come on, I'm a doctor, right? So using that, but I always believe, you know, using the correct terms and using correct pictures. I don't believe in that curiosity myth, right? You're going to create more curiosity. You're going to take their innocence. I don't believe that. My nine-year-old knows more about sex and porn than probably any nine-year-old in this country, intellectually speaking, right? And he... He's my little sweetheart, and there's no innocence lost. I have empowered him with knowledge. He's now prepared. He now knows what to do. He knows to turn away. He knows to walk away. It's empowering. It's not taking their innocence. But thank you. That's a good question. Yes? Great question, because we just had that masturbation talk, right? Um, that was also not my favorite topic, right? I am not concerned about little children masturbating, OK? Now, that's not an official LDS stance or a Catholic stance. I don't have an official stance on that, okay? My concern is always more if it becomes, if it's habit forming, right? That's always the concern. They're gonna touch themselves, that's okay, right? In our eight to an 11 year old book, we've had people be upset with us because we've encouraged them to have their daughters get a mirror and look at their vagina. And people are like, oh, you did not just say that, right? It's a vagina, it's not shameful, it's not a secret, it's a vagina, okay? Your child should know what it looks like. They don't have it hanging in front of them, okay? <laughs> okay? So I want them to know, I want my daughter to know what she looks like and to be like, yep, that's my body part, you know? So masturbation, that's a great question. You're, I mean, there's a lot of different thoughts out there, you know, that it's totally healthy, it's awesome, it's wonderful, it's fabulous, and then some people, no, no. So. You're going to have to make that call. I'm not concerned with, I'm, again, more when it's a habit. That's when, I, that's when I'm looking. That's when I'm going, hmm, let's, let's not masturbate at the kitchen table. Thanks, right? <laughs> let's go wash our hands. So let's, you know, so, but, but I'm not going to approach it like this either. I'm going to just say, hey, you know, let's get your hands out of your pants and wash. Thanks. OK, yes, back there. Can you stand up? Go ahead and stand up so we can hear you.
Yeah, and it's, and it's about talking about it like this, right? Yeah. Not like this, right? Absolutely, I like that, absolutely. Yes? Well, what, but give me something more specific. Like, is it somebody touching her? Or is it somebody being like inappropriately doing something? Because then I'm, I'm not going to downplay. But if it's something that she saw a sculpture, you know, in an art museum of a naked woman, then I'm going to be like, that's OK. You know, yeah, that's a beautiful piece of art. Isn't that wonderful? It's not a commodification that that artist is not trying to make a um, million dollars off of a woman's body. So I'm going to, but if it's somebody, then I am going to explore, and I'm, but, I'm, but I am going to talk to her like this. You know, just like when you, you know, when you talk to a therapist, they don't go, what? What happened to you? Oh my gosh, right? It's, OK, well, tell me more about that. OK, well, how did that make you feel? What do you think? You know, again, letting them just kind of, maybe it's just, I think it's just in the expression of getting it out. You know, there's some things where I'm like, I got to get it out. I'm that kind of girl, right? Drama, right? But there's, with my child, I'm going to, okay, well, let me know. And then I can gauge better on, okay, do I need to, do I need to freak out with her? Or, or can I go ahead and soothe her down on that? Yes? Um, so what, like, I only have one child. But what do you do when your child does come to you and say, so I saw this sculpture and I really What, like what would you would do? I would definitely talk with the parent. If it was an older sibling, then I would have a sit down with the older sibling. That's, all, that's very common. If it's a friend or at a friend's house, I'm definitely talking to the parents. Before I even send my children to someone's house, I ask them, I say, so what do you, you know, do you have filters on your computer and on your phones? Oh, you don't? Okay, then I don't know, and then I don't know if I want my child to come to your house. I'm really sorry. I'm just kind of really conservative about that. It's not you, it's me. But I, I kind of set up those, then they already know these are my feelings. And this is family members. These are my parents. These are my cousins. These are not, not just the, the stranger. I make those parameters. So then I, they've already, I've established that conversation that they know I have, I have a, an opinion about pornography. And I, I also just generally say, I don't want my child playing with screens at your home. They came to play with a child. That's, again, about the, building that intimacy and getting away from this disconnect. I want my child to play with other children, not play video games together. I'm like, you know, I want them to, to to learn and grow from that friend. So that's where I am with that. But I definitely would talk to the parent about that. Yes? What questions do you use on a daily basis to ask your kids about what happened? I usually say, tell me the best thing and the worst thing that happened today when they get in the car. And I'd like to see them. Like I, they, I might have them take the bus to school, but I like to see them right after school. Because then they lose that, because they're processing their day, right? So I, try, I happen to pick up my kids after school for that reason, because I want to, I want to process that day with them. That, by the time they've got off the bus 30 minutes later, they already processed their day. They're done, right? They're ready to go jump on a trampoline or do their homework. So, but I, I start out there. And if, on Pinterest has a ton of great conversation starters like that, because you can also do it at the dinner table. You know, what was the awesome thing and what was the not so awesome thing today? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the longer you wait, the more awkward. We, I start with questions. You know, that I, I'm a question person. I love conversation. And it is 12 o'clock, so if you need to leave, go ahead, and, go ahead and leave. It's the lunch hour, OK? So I don't want to hold you back. And don't, I'm not offended if you go up and, get, and leave. Um, so, with my, so with my young, it is easier with the younger kids. With my older daughter, yeah, I've, like, you know, if you have, like, say, a fifth grader, they're going to have that talk this year or older, or they've already had it. So you can ask them, what have you learned about such and such? You know, tell me what your knowledge is of, you know, do you, do you understand your anatomy, you know? Or, you know, you can bring it even more, you know, more generalized, you know? If they're going through changes, they're going through puberty, go ahead and start there on those conversations. But if, with, the, with the younger kids, you can, you can kind of start more directive. And as they're older, tell me what you know about this. Do you understand how this works? Tell me how a baby, do you know, you know, if, if it's thir a 13-year-old child, 
Tell, how, tell me how a baby is made. Do you know how a baby's made? Okay, you know, and you understand that that's how you came and that, you know what I mean? Like, so finding out first what they know, then that right there, you start, you just, you just laid the groundwork and then you're gonna go ahead and take it up a notch and take it up a notch. Does that help? Okay, because I like to know where they know because sometimes they know way more than you think they knew, believe me. Okay, I'm shocked at the things that my kids hear about. Yes? So I, I have a big problem. I have a teenage daughter and she doesn't want to tell me what she knows. I mean, it's like, no, 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 you know, she puts her hands over her ears. Yeah. Not one, that, <coughs> so where do you go when you have. Uh, we, you know, we have some great books that I'm not supposed to advertise. Um, <laughs> that, are, that are right out there. We have a 12 plus book, an 8 to an 11, and a 3 to 7. And it has great discussions, okay? And we definitely, we, you're not the first parent that has that. So don't feel bad that you have the child who's like, I don't want to hear growls. You start with those other related topics. We're going to talk about healthy relationships. We're going to talk about body image. There's no way your daughter isn't being completely bombarded by images all around her that are telling her that she needs, that she needs to look a certain way and dress a certain way. Start there. Okay, because then you start those bodily conversations. You know, what does that mean? You know, what is that, why, is, why, is, why are they doing that? Why is that magazine trying to sell that to us? You know, starting with these other topics, talking about self-esteem, you know, how we feel about various things. How do you think, what are the, you know, with an older child, especially middle school and up, gender roles is a great place to start and double standards because they're seeing it all around them, right? What, you know, what, what, how things are for a boy and how things are for a girl. That's another great place to start. You don't have to start right in with penis and vagina, okay? It doesn't have to start there, okay? You start with these other related topics and you start building there because then when you get to that point, it's no big deal because you've already talked about all these related topics. You've talked about how, you know, you know that you don't just, you know, your first date, we don't have sex, right? Maybe you start with hand holding and hugging and why do we do that? Why is that so awesome? Why is that progression so amazing and beautiful and fun? Right? We miss that, right? We think we have to go right to penis vagina. We don't have to go right there yet. Talk about that progression about amazing relationships. Any other questions? Yes. Um I can. I can. If you come to our table and sign up with your put your email. We send an email about once or twice a month and put in parentheses slides. Or maybe if there's something else you want information. If you are a Christian and you want to have a presentation, I have a presentation for you. Okay? You don't ha I have an LDS slideshow. Okay? That is meant to be done as like a, a lesson or like a fireside that has quotes from general authority. The Christian one has more quotes from like Billy Graham and other other um, sources, right? But they're teaching the same stuff as we are, right? You know, to have those conversations. Okay? Any other questions? Right. Yes. The what? Access the what? The presentation. You're going to come and you're going to sign up with your email and you're going to write in parentheses slides, meaning you would like to see the slides. Okay? Or you can take, you know, well, I guess it's too late to take pictures of the slides. <laughs> but um, yeah, just come over and just write your name down and put in parentheses, I want your slides. Okay? But we also have the books, the handout. Did you guys get the handout? That's, that's basically like a table of contents from our books. So even if you never buy the book, please cover those topics with your child, okay? But come check out the books, read through them, see what you like. All right, anything else? No? They're out there on the table on our, you'll see our little symbol, our little um, flip thing there, okay? Thank you so much.